All right, thanks for watching. And from the producer of the product integral comes now the product derivative, which you want to think of as the sequel of the product integral, which again, just saying I came up with this first. Okay, so. <laughs> So recall, so previously on Paya Battlestar Galactica, there's this wonderful thing called the product integral, which just says, what if we take our function, but instead of summing it up, we multiply the values, and you get this weird thing, integral of f of x to the dx, which we just calculated to be e of an integral of ln of f of x dx. And again, the reason why we come up with this, well, if we multiply values of a function, but we take ln of this, then it becomes the sum of ln of f, which is really the integral of ln of f, and therefore the product integral, you just exponentiate ln of f of x. And so this is how to product integrate and now the question is, how do you now do product differentiation? Well, it's entirely analogous. So let me remind you of the steps. How do you find a product integral? You first find ln to get ln of f. Then you integrate to find integral of ln of f. And then you exponentiate to get e of integral of ln of f. Well, to product differentiate, you just have to do the reverse. You first take ln, then to get, you know, uh, if you want f, then you get ln of f. Then you differentiate to get ln of f prime. And then you reverse, you exponentiate to get e of ln of f prime. So this is the product derivative. And how do I write this? There's actually, I found a cool notation for this uh, notation. So not df over dx, but df to the one over dx. <laughs> and I'll explain why I have this notation. And by what I just said, that should be e of ln of f prime. And by the Chen Lu, we get E of f prime over f. Okay, why do we have this notation? Because it works very well with this. Because, look, what happens when you product integrate the product derivative? Well, you literally raise df to the 1 over dx to the dx power. And then we get integral of df, which is just at, by you know fundamental theorem of calculus, such as f maybe plus some constant. If you like those constants. Uh, okay, and now let's just um, prove a couple of properties and do some examples. So first of all, let's show that the product derivative is really the inverse of the product integral. So. For example, let's show that the product integral of the product derivative gives you the function. So, remember the product integral is e to the integral of ln. Now let's do e the product integral of the product derivative, which here now is uh, e of e of ln of f prime. Well, not a problem. Look, ln of e is just itself. So e of integral of ln of f prime. But integral of the derivative is a function itself. So e of ln of f. If you want plus a constant, but e of ln of f is just f. So it's, you know, e of ln of f times e to the c. So e to the c times f. Sorry, uh, yeah, e to the c times f correct. So in particular, if let c be 0, then you do get f. So it's basically an inverse. And um, what else?
so now let's do the opposite. So what if you do the uh, product derivative of the product integral? So e of ln, sorry, e of the derivative of ln of the product integral, which is e of integral of ln of f dx if you want, then uh, Let's see, is that correct? Uh, yeah, then what we get is uh, ln of e, that cancels out, and we get e of the integral of ln of f prime, but the derivative of the integral is just a function, so e of ln of f, and that is f. So indeed, that works. The, you know, uh, the product derivative of the product integral is a function itself, and the product integral of the product derivative is a function, but times some constant. <coughs> okay. And now the rest is just, I mean, for the second part, let's just do some examples. So, and I have no idea what this is useful for. I just think it's a cool thing, and I'm sure there's some quantum mechanics stuff probably, or some Lie algebra stuff, where you can apply this to. So first of all, if f of x is a constant and non-zero, otherwise we can't take ln, then the I want to say half derivative, but no, the product derivative is again, remember we can use that rule uh, e of uh, f prime over f. Well, that becomes e of constant prime over con f, so e of 0 over f, which is e of 0, which is 1. So the product derivative of a constant is 1, it's not 0. And in fact, the product derivative can never be zero because e, it's e of something. Very unlike uh, the regular derivative. Okay, what if we have x to the k? It's almost x k c d. Then dx to the k to the one over dx. Well, that's e of. You differentiate this k x to the k minus 1 over x to the k, and you get k over x, which is really cool. Like the product derivative of x squared is e over to the 2 over x. Like who would have thought? I mean, which derivative gives you, transforms x squared into e to the 2 over x? I find that really freaky. Okay, next one. f of x equals e to the x. Then we get, again, e to the derivative of e to the x over e to the x, and we get e. Surprisingly, it gives you another constant. Who would have thought? Okay, and I got very excited with this. I was like, well, if it works for e to the x, let's do the Mona e to the x Lisa. So f of x is e to the e to the e to the x. Then what do we get? e to the derivative of this. So e to the e to the e to the x. e to the e to the x. e to the x. Again, look how pretty this is. And we get over e to the e to the e to the x. So the function itself. And this cancels out. And what we get is, so e to the e to the e to the x times e to the x. Which I think that's correct, right? Uh, la, 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 la. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So it's pretty, right? It's like it transforms a mona e to the x Lisa to this tower of uh, mona e to the x Lisa. So I think, I think you can write this as e to the e to the e to the x, but to the power of e to the x. So not like e to the e to the e to the e to the x, but sort of this power. So it sort of elongates it a little bit, which I think it's cool. Um, 
All right, and then how about trig functions? Why not? Um, I think that was part six. How about f of x equals cosine of x? Then we get e to the derivative of this minus sine of x over cosine of x, and that becomes e to the minus tangent of x. And you can continue like that, so it's pretty neat. And next thing, next up, what about some properties? So, so you see the derivative works very well with products. So it, it turns out, and it is true, that the exponential derivative works very well with exponents. In particular, let's calculate the derivative of f of x to a constant. Then this becomes e to the constant, so let's use Chen Lu, c f of x to the c minus 1 times f prime of x over the function, so f of x to the c power. And then what we get is e to the c f prime of x over f. And that's e to the f prime over f to the constant. So what this tells us is that the product derivative of f to the c, 1 over dx, gives you the product derivative of f to the c power. Kind of makes sense if you're kind of interchanging this, except we have this d, so it's not that obvious. All right, in fact, what's so special about that constant, it turns out it's not that special. So let's do the derivative of f of x to the g of x. And here it's actually more useful to use the original definition with e to the ln. So what this becomes, again, you exponentiate, then you take ln of that, so g ln of f, and you differentiate that. Okay, then we get e of g prime ln of f plus g derivative of ln of f, so f prime over f. And what this becomes, so this is e to the ln of f, which is just f, so f to the g prime power times the product derivative, let's write it as pf, to the g power. So in other words, the product derivative of f to the g is kind of this product loop. Uh, it's f to the g prime times the product derivative to the g. So for example, Let's do x to the x. Then what does that tell us? It tells us it's x to the derivative of g, so x to the 1, times the, again, the um, product derivative of x to the x. And we get something very neat that's x. And then using that other rule, x to the k, what happens to x to the k? It's e to the 1 over x. So e to the 1 over x to the x. But that's just uh, e. So x times e to the 1. So x e. How cool. x to the x becomes x e. Who would have thought? I mean, I think it's, that's why math is beautiful. And then just two more things. So the... Um, Product integral works very well with products. So it turns out the product derivative also works very well with products. So maybe let me do it here. Now, what about the product derivative of fg? Like maybe it's obvious or not, but you take e of ln of that. So ln of f plus ln of g and you differentiate that, and what this becomes is e of ln of f prime plus, so ln of g prime, so e times ln of g prime, but that's just the product thing of f times the product derivative of g. 
So in other words, the product derivative of fg is just the product derivative of f times the product derivative of g. And similarly, you can show that the product derivative of f over g, maybe let me do that. So f over g, that becomes e of, in this case, ln of f minus ln of g prime. And that just becomes e of ln of f prime over e of ln of g prime, which is indeed the quotient of product derivatives. So uh, in other words, also p of f over g. It's p of f over p of g. All right, and that's all I have to say about this. So if you have any other ideas, just comment below, and maybe you have some other exotic functions whose product derivatives are nice, or other properties you can think of. Yeah, just comment below. And if you like this adventure, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.